So what are you, how are you viewing this right now? What should we read through here with the NASDAQ hitting all time highs? And you have some analysts out there rightfully noting that it's you know, 25%, 30% is really caught up in uh, a handful of names for the index. What's your read through on this? Well, I mean, I definitely think as part of a well-diversified portfolio, you definitely want to own um, some of these big tech names and work from home names. But, you know, I think the one thing that I really look at here is, you know, these have these have continued to thrive all throughout this thing. They're kind of leading the charge as far as the run up here. But, you know, if you look at it from the perspective of, you know, is there a lot of room? Is there a lot of upside potential for these going forward? And the way that I look at it is that Americans have really shifted their spending to the virtual economy. So essentially, they've compressed 10 years of anticipated e-commerce growth into a matter of weeks. The other thing is, is that like if you look at it from a capitalization perspective, like, for example, like Microsoft and Amazon alone, their capitalization uh, is more than the FTSE 100 at this point. So, you know, the way that I look at it is that, you know, you've got these these big tech companies that have had an incredible run. Um, I think at some point these might be might might appear to be a little bit overvalued. And so, would you say this is more of just the the stocks themselves are overvalued? If you're looking at maybe making an adjustment, or is this just more of a relative play in that maybe some areas have become more attractive from a valuation perspective? Well, I think it's I think it's twofold. One, I I do think that these stocks have become overvalued, and then also uh, to your question, I think there's some other sectors that, sectors that have become more attractive. Like for example, like the financials or the energy sector have really uh, started to look good. I mean, they, these are two areas that that I think you and I will agree have gotten hit the hardest, uh, but they they're also really starting to have an incredible run up here. Uh, in some cases, up almost seventy percent on the energy sector. And so are you really looking for any sort of a, a catalyst um, one way or another? Is there something that really might spark more selling? We saw, we, I think we got a little taste of that in the past week. Um, certainly we're able to make that up today. But is there some sort of catalyst on the horizon uh, that you're looking for? Is it going to be uh, the economy starts to reopen? We do get a, a much stronger recovery than we were expecting. Um, is there some sort of threat to the, the companies themselves in terms of uh, regu regulation, whatever that might be. What do you be looking for for a potential catalyst that could really maybe cause some some more selling and some more pronounced selling in some of these uh, high flying tech names? Well, I mean, I think you know the the one thing is that a lot of the bad news I think is already priced in here. Uh, do you think that that's coming because the we're going to start to see economic growth really start to pick up here. Um, do, you, do you see it as more of a fiscal or, or monetary uh, support? Um, what's, what is that, that catalyst? And do you think in that, in that scenario, do we still want to consider maybe some, some sectors like energy or financials? Yeah, I mean, I think you're, you're going to see a lot of people going back to work. You're going to see businesses opening up. You're going to see you know, more and more people going out to eat, um, going to stores. They're going to be driving. So you know, I think, you know, I, I don't want to, I don't want to make any, uh, any false predictions here, but I think, you know, people are going to start driving more often. So I think energy is going to, I think energy is going to, we're going to see some spike up there. Uh, always, uh, always interesting to hear your take on these things. Thanks a lot, Chris. Uh, appreciate you coming on. That was Chris Payne, financial advisor at Payne Capital Management.